I'm here at the Divertimenti and Daunt Books Culinary Salon with Nick Lander. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you. your Pleasure. book, The Art of the Restaurateur, which is fabulous. Thank you. And in it, you look at, I believe, 20 restaurants. 20, rest and 20 restaurateurs. Restaurateurs. And I was looking at it, and it was interesting because they're very, very different. And you said the one common denominator for them is the vision they have. What do you mean by that? What's Well, what's the one the common denominator even before that is that I admire them all immensely. Mm. That's the first thing. Uh, but the vision is, I think, that these are people who've really transformed not just restaurants over the last 10 or 15 years, but also our city centres. Mm -hmm. And they've seen places and they've seen buildings and they've looked at them and they thought, hmm, I could do something mm. here. And the most striking example of that is Mark Sainsbury with Morrow, mm. which was, a form was formerly a supermarket, a spa supermarket, an Exmouth market Amazing. that was not, it was a street in the mid 1990s that was not safe to walk down. And they took a risk and they opened up there and it has now got something like 15 restaurants and cafes down it, a uh, bookshop, another bookshop, and it's just, you know, on everybody's list of places to go in London, you know, and, it's and it started all from that very bold decision. It's interesting because we're, you know, there have been lots of books that look at chefs or what happens in the kitchen, but you're looking at what happens in the front of the house and the experience that's created for customers who come in and that, that kind of certain alchemy that occurs. And you seem to have a real passion for that uh, and a real, a real love for that, for that art that they bring to it. Well, thank you. Uh, that's partly because I was a restaurateur. Mm -hmm. It's partly because our son is a restaurateur, so there must be something in the genes, but it is the most exciting profession uh, and dealing not just with all kinds of people who walk through the door not actually sure of things like who they're going to meet or what name the booking is in or that kind of thing to the many many different reasons why they're in the restaurant in the first place and then the whole question of the food and dealing with the chefs and keeping them happy which is uh, not easy um, and then, the, but there is this fundamental point that I think people feel that a restaurateur is there to look after his customers, mm. whereas the best restaurateurs appreciate that actually they're there to look after their staff. And if they train their staff in the ideal that they have, then they will in turn look after all their customers and everybody will be happy. And, and, and you talk in some of them about, and, and when you talk about your own restaurant, about how the unexpected happens and that you have to be ready to deal with emergencies on a daily basis and delivering a consistent experience because people expect that. They want to come and know that there's going to be a certain level, don't they? Yes. People have become very possessive of restaurants. Mm. Once you set a marker down for them, they come back time and time again. And they love that and they expect... It, 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 one of the hardest things to do in a restaurant is funnily enough, is change a menu. Because actually, you know, the, you look at the menu, you've got eight, ten starters, eight, ten main courses, and you have to have certain things. But then there are certain dishes that are the best sellers, so you never want to take them off. Then there are certain things that the chef wants to cook particularly, so you can't take them off. So f suddenly you started because you want to open a restaurant with your menu and your style of food, and suddenly you find that actually, if it's, when it's successful, it's owned by everybody who comes mm. in there. And you have to say thank you very much and sit back and enjoy it. It, it. It's interesting as well because you talk about how it can be grueling mentally, but also physically. And I think we think of chefs being, you know, physically, you know, demanding with what they do. But the front of the house, it's incredibly, you know, it takes a toll, doesn't it? It takes a toll. It's physically, you know, now the everybody wants big restaurants. Well, they actually require great physical fitness and agility. Um, London is particularly demanding in a way that New York is as well in that it also has, uh, the architecture is Victorian and so there are a lot of tall narrow buildings often with a kitchen in the basement and you have to run and rely on lifts which break down. So it is a very very demanding, you don't need a gym membership once you become a restaurateur, you can forget about it. It's, you know, just uh, just concentrate on the customers. Surviving. It's surviving. Well, it's a fascinating read, and thank you so much thank for joining us. We really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you.